So, this morning I just want to share with us, you know, I say with us because not, um, and I always say that when I'm sharing this message, whoever is listening to me, this message has changed me already, and this message is for me as you listen to me speaking, you know. It's very powerful that you understand this is going to allow you to align yourself in the right perspective as you witness for Jesus Christ. So, uh, and I'm going to share, uh, share a few things here. Four signs of an effective witness, witnessing believer. Four signs as a believer who's sharing, who's witnessing for Jesus Christ. What are these signs that you should possess? What are these signs people can see? And then they see that you are there. There, there can be many. But I'm saying, however, there are several verses which I write. There. I'm going to share with you some verses and also from the burn of inspiration. And you see what really it is that when we are, when we are a witness, when you are a believer, God has called you to be a, wi a witness. Uh, you know, somebody witnessed you. And you know who is a witness. You come and share some things that you saw happening to somebody and you are going to testify in court and you say, yes, indeed, I saw this happen. So what is this that you are testifying to some people? What are you witnessing? And where are you standing? Number one, I want to say this because I'm going to be very brief. I don't want, you know, I don't preach long sermons. I'm going to be very brief. So number one, if you are really, uh, uh, the one sign that you need to know as a believer that you are a, an effective witness, huh? you are witnessing, it is number one, living a, 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 a transformed life. Are you being transformed? And how are you being transformed? When you accepted Jesus Christ, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and then I was baptized. Now the whole man was buried and I resurrected. I became a new creation. I became a new crea crea uh, creature. Now in Jesus Christ. That's why the book of Paul says this in the book of Romans, no, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, you know, this is a congregation. He's saying, therefore, if anyone is born of what? Is born, if anyone in, no, I'm sorry. Let me read it properly. Therefore, if anyone is in where? Is in Christ. If I am in Christ Jesus Christ. When I have already accepted Jesus Christ, now I'm being transformed. I have accepted Jesus. The Bible says, the new creation has done what? Has come. I am in Jesus Christ. I have accepted Jesus Christ. I am now in Jesus Christ. Now the new what? The new, the new creation has come. I am no longer the whole creation, but I'm a new creation. And that person that we inherited from the first Adam has already done what? Has gone. Now I have the second Adam who is who? Jesus Christ. Now I live in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ lives in me. Now it's no longer I but Jesus Christ lives in my life. Hallelujah. And I, therefore when I walk around, wherever I am, what happens? I walk as a living and a transformed what? A creature. I am now living a transformed life. And so when people see me, they feel the presence of Jesus Christ wherever we are. Now people can notice that somebody's here. You remember say, somebody in the Bible who used to be with Jesus at all times. And now when Jesus already been betrayed, Jesus, you know, Jesus being taken and uh, they have captured Jesus and now everybody's denying Jesus. And now it's Peter, you know, Peter, what they said? Peter tried to deny Jesus Christ. What did they say? They said, even your accent, you can hear the accent. You talk like Jesus. You talk as one who was with Jesus. My friends, let me tell you, when Jesus Christ is in us, when Jesus Christ is in you, you become a powerful creature, a transformed creature. 
you become new because the Bible says the old has done what? The old has gone. And what? The new has come. The new is here. Now you are no longer that person. You start walking in holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's very, very important, children of God. I want you to note this, friends. Transformation is a journey, not a destination. It is not an end, but it's a journey. That's what we call sanctification. When you have accepted Jesus Christ, you now continually depend on Jesus Christ because he lives in you. There, there, you know, I say this, there will be ups and downs. When you have already accepted Jesus, you are living a new creation has come, but still it is a journey, it's not a, a destination. And I want to say this, there will be ups and downs, set, setbacks and breakthroughs. What do we need to do? We need to be patient, children of God. We need to be patient and then celebrate your progress as you continue moving. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue celebrating your progress as you continue moving on. And learn from, from your experiences. Learn from your former experiences. How it was it? And then you start moving on. I want to ask, uh, when we continue doing like that, what do we do? Focus on your on progress. As a new creature, as a new in Jesus Christ, as you continue living a transformed life, focus on what? On your progress, not your perfection. Do you understand what I mean here? Do you understand what I mean here? Focus on what? Progress. progress. Because you are progressing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are moving on, witnessing for Jesus Christ. You are receiving new power in you. Now don't look at, oh, I am stagnant. I am not moving. Powerful people that God has empowered, they keep on, at, at, you know, assessing their what? Their progress. I am I progressing? Am I moving on? And then, strive for continuous improvement. Not, uh, listen very carefully. I say, strive for what? Continuous improvement. Not unrealistic ideas. You continue Assessing, you strive for continuous improvement. Yes, I'm a new creature, a, a creation. Yes, has come. But we are living in the world of sin. Now you focus on what? You focus, you focus on your progress. Then you strive for what? You strive for continuous improvement in your life. Amen. It is very powerful, children of God. Listen what Dan G.Y. says, you know, the pen of inspiration says. Through conversion will manifest itself in a life that is changed. Do you get what I say here? It says here, through con conversion, you know when you are converted, through conversion will manifest itself in a life that is changed. In other words, we are being transformed. Jesus already has transformed. Our mind is being transformed. Those are true witnesses. Those are, those are effective witness, witnesses. It says here, it will produce fruit. You know, let me tell you. Listen to me. The true conversion, if you are converted, if you are truly converted, then the true conversion will manifest itself in a life that is changed. When you are changed, when you are ch who is changing you? The one that you are in. Jesus Christ. It says in, you are in Jesus Christ. You are a new creation. No, it says here, now you will start producing fruit. You start bearing fruit because you are changed already. You are living the truth. You are now, you are a transformed, you are, you are living a transformed life. Now we will start seeing fruits. You know, let me tell you, Jesus, one time, he was passing and he was angry. I didn't have anything to eat. You know, they were the disciples. And they saw a very glittering, you know, uh, bland uh, fruit, you know, like uh, it was, I don't know whether it was a mango tree or what, but he saw those, the, the tree, which was really with the very beautiful leaves. But when he went, he moved closer, and do you know what he did? He didn't see anything. He never saw any fruit there. He thought he can get something. You know, friends, you can greet and you can say, that's why I was saying, we can quote verses from the Bible, but if we are not living what did, we cannot produce fruit. You will see, we are the same way. We are so stagnant. I am so stagnant. Why? Because, yes, I'm feeding myself, but I'm, why am I not producing? Because I'm not living what I'm feeding. 
If the food you eat, it should make you greater. It should make you change. Otherwise, what you are eating is not the right food. If I'm eating, it should know it shows that now we will start seeing the fruit coming. We should produce the fruit. And G.Y. says here, the converted soul will have a love for God. A converted soul will have what? A love for God. And do we have love for God? Yes, for sure we have love for God. That's where we are. You will have a love for God and a service. You will love to serve. Serving, doing service for God, witnessing for Jesus Christ, you will never keep quiet. And it will show for the fruits of the, of what? Of the Spirit. They will be starting. That's steps, for, to, Christ, steps to Christ, page 63. As you live a transformed life, you must allow your light to do what? To shine. If I'm transformed, I am a new creation. Now I have to allow what? To, to shine. My, uh, as I live a transformed life, I, 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 I must allow my light to shine before others. I have to allow it because you know when Jesus Jesus one time was talking about you cannot you cannot you cannot write or a hill a, a city in a hill cannot be what it cannot be hidden it cannot be it, it, hidden it's always you can see it or you cannot light a, 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 a lamp and do what and put it under something it should be shining over and now that's when he came down Jesus said here. Then he said, in the same way, that's in Matthew what, 5, 16. He says, in the same way, let what? Let your light shine before others. When you are an effective witness, you have to allow your light shine to others. You cannot go to many stories and forget to shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to share the love of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, children of God, if we are truly converted, if we are truly uh, uh, transformed, and we are living a, a transformed life, we will throw men to us and then to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As people follow us, they are following who? Jesus Christ. Paul says, follow me as I do what? As I follow Christ. We will be like a spark. We will be like a magnet just influencing men into Jesus Christ wherever we are. Because of what? Because our lives have been transformed. We are not the same again. Now when we walk around, as people will notice that this is our children of God. Have you ever in your workplace, wherever you do, as you walk around, people can identify you that you are a child of God. Because the way you walk, the, wa the way you talk, the way you say things. You know, there are people that be, uh, can be around you, but they are always negative thinkers. When you are saying something, they say something. When you are trying to say this, they say something. There is nothing that can impact you. And these people, you can edit it from your life. Just remove them from your life. Yes, yeah, it's good to have friends, but have friends that can inspire you. People that can inspire you. People can make you move forward. People can access your progress. I'm saying, Elder Paul, you are moving to the right direction. But people say, there's nothing you are doing here. You are just doing a zero work. Those are the motivators. You need to erase them from your life. Not to help them, but let them be aside. We want people who can motivate you, who can empower you, who can encourage you. Do you know there are some people who can do what? Instead of energizing you, but they can drain your energy. You have to be align yourself with the right people. Even at your workplace, not everybody is your friend. Some people, want, they want to see your downfall. These are the people you need to, yes, they are my friends, but I need to be careful. Hallelujah. If anyone I'm witnessing them, let them see. And sister, sister Claire, oh, sister Nathani, how comes you are like this? Say, because I love my Lord Jesus Christ. Because I've been transformed by the love of God. That's why you are so kind. That's why when they say anything, you never mind them. And you still love them. And you still hug them. You know, that's very unique. Why? Because you are in Jesus Christ. Because your life has been transformed. You are no longer the old person, but you are a new creation. How comes today, nowadays, you are the way you are? Because I received a new life. Where? In Jesus Christ. 
I want to follow you, Jesus. If you can change you from this, I want also to be changed the same way. Hallelujah. That's a great witnessing, you know. Because your light has been shining and the people have seen. Now they can start glorifying your father. Who is where? In heaven. And they want to join and glorify the same father you are glorifying. Hallelujah. Follow Jesus, children of God. Yes, we allow our light to shine before others. When we have to learn, when we learn to embrace self, self what? Self-compassion. Do you have self-compassion to yourself? Yes, you must have it. In other words, you know that I am a child of God. And this is the way I should behave. This is the way I should do things. Because I am a child of God. I have you know, there are some people who don't have self-compassion. They don't. They don't. And then, then, you know, even Jesus Christ, that's why he was able to pull aside. Because he understood. Let your body, when your body is telling you something, listen to your body. Don't talk to your body. Do you know there are people who talk to their body? When the body is saying, Elder Paul, you are, you are tired. Instead of resting, then you start saying, no, I am strong. I should go. I should go. And then you break down. That's why I like the man of God there, Brother King said, you know, when he feels cold in the freezer, then he goes out and some people go to accuse him. But the manager says, no, he's doing the right thing because I am with him. Amen. He's with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's protecting him, covering. He goes there. It's not because he's lazy. He's listening to the body. He can freeze and die there. When we are in Jesus Christ, we have know that Jesus is able to help us in whatever, wherever we are, in, even in our witnessing. In other words, be kind to yourself during challenges and setbacks. When you are a child of God, it doesn't mean things will go all smoothly. There will be set, setbacks. There will be challenges. But we know that God is greater than our what? Our challenges in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very important. Friends, witnessing brings... Brings with a living, uh, 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 brings with a with living a life that reflects the teachings of Jesus. Hallelujah. What did I say again? Witnessing brings what? Brings with what? Brings uh, uh, witnessing uh, uh, brings with a, li a living a life that reflects G the teachings of Jesus. Do you when you are witnessing? You have to learn the teaching of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus behave? How did Jesus live? Then when, because he was a humble man. He was a loving man. When he was here. And we have to do that the same way. We have to learn. This includes displaying love, compassion, forgiveness, and integrity. This, demonstrating the, the positive impact of faith in what? In your actions. You know, let me tell you, if we show love to everybody, people will come to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. People will come to Christ. You know what we are lacking? is love. If we truly love people and the people feel, because you know people have feelings. Do you know that? When surely you love somebody, you can feel that you love this person. Hallelujah. You can't lie. You can't deny. If you go somebody, you see somebody the way he is, but you still love this person. It doesn't care. You will see people following you. That's what Jesus did. Jesus Christ method alone. He mingled with people as one who desires their goods. Do you understand? He mingled with people as one who desires. You mingle with people. They think that you are desiring to take their goods, but you are not desiring to take them. Hallelujah. And then he, he, he did what? Number two. When he mingled with, the, with them, he sympathized with them. You know, I can add also empathize with them. That's why he, he was able to meet their needs. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, number one, he did what I said. He mingled as one who desires to take their goods. You know, you mingle the people. When they are thinking you are going to get their, their things, they see, they feel the presence of Jesus Christ. They feel the power. The power of Jesus Christ. And then, and then not only that, you sympathize with them. That's why I tell you, in the hospital, we give what we call compassionate presence. They think you have come to do something. Some people, they think that we are going to, direct, to declare them dead. No, we are just one to stand in between the gap. We are standing in between the gap. As the doctors are just working for this patient, we are there to stand in between the gap and pray in the seat for these people. And they can feel the presence. They can feel the love when you are holding somebody's hand. The love of God is a powerful witnessing. 
when they feel that. And then, and then they did what? And then we display compassion, I've said. So, number one, Jesus Christ's method alone. Now we should follow that. And if we do Jesus' method alone, we don't need any other strategy. Hallelujah. Because what we need is just to mingle where people are. If you are taking a bag of something, take it. And people would never say no. Just take it, a bag of something, maybe a, something you want to offer to them. But mingle with people. Until we mingle with people, they will not feel the presence of God. How will they notice the power of Jesus Christ if we are not mingling with them? If we are not sympathizing with them, if we are not empathizing with them, and then if we are not meeting their needs. Number three, he, he did what? He met their needs. And after meeting their needs, he did what? He fed them. Follow me. He just met their needs. People are needful. People need our prayers. People need us to go and just sit and listen to them to talk to you. People are just suffering. You go and do visitation when you visit. Sometimes I visit house to house. I say today I am going out. And one of the Sundays I just woke up. I say I dress myself. I say I'm going out. And then I just go and sit with the people. And I start talking to people. Let me tell you, people will tell you things. They say, thank you for coming along. Thank you for just listening to me. Don't talk too much. Let people tell you. People want, they don't have people listen to you, to them. They don't, want, they don't have people that they can share and venerate. They just pour to you. And they feel relieved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. People need to be, we need to, that's a really powerful witnessing. That's when you become an effective witness believer. Uh, you become a powerful believer who knows how to witness, who has an effective ways of witnessing. And I want to say something here. Number two, boldness, boldness in sharing what? Sharing the gospel. Number one, I said, an effective witness Witnessing believer, what does he have? must have? Number one, he must have a, he must live a transformed world. Life. And I've shared with that. Number two, should be bold in sharing the gospel. Hallelujah. Boldness in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, you can hear us when people are already living in Jesus Christ, they are not ashamed of anything. They're so bold because they know where the Lord has taken them from. They are sure who, who, who they are talking about. You are witnessing of Jesus who has done a miracle in your life. You are witnessing a Jesus who took us from far away and they brought us here. And we are seeing what he's doing in our lives. Hallelujah. You have cried to Jesus Christ and you have seen what he has done in your life. How can, that, why, can, why can, I, how can I keep quiet? How can, I, why can't I be bold? When I know what he has done in my life. You know, the, the book of uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 20 says, We cannot help but speak about what he have see, we have seen and heard. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, how can we, you know, this is, this is you know, Luke, uh, it's Luke who, who recorded the book of Acts. He says, we cannot help but speak. I cannot keep quiet, in other words. But I have to speak of what? About what I've seen and what I've heard. I have seen miracles in my life. I have heard what Jesus has done for others. Not only for me, but what he has done for others. I have shared with you my testimonies. How Jesus led me. I was even dead and he resurrected me. So I cannot tell people what I've seen in my life. I cannot share with people what I've heard other people say. That's so powerful what Jesus can do in my life. What Jesus can do in your life. So you can share. You know, sharing your stories becomes a preach of how you can reach. People can also know that the same Jesus you are serving, they, he can also rescue them the same way as he rescued you. Hallelujah. He can do what, what he has done for you, he can do for others in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Very, very important, children of God. If you read Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the Bible says, therefore go and do what? And make disciples. You cannot go if you are not bold enough. Can you go if you are not bold enough? No. An effective witness, witness, witness huh, is a person who can go boldly because you understand what you are going to testify, what you are going to witness about. Hallelujah. A witness of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, not of Nazareth alone, Jesus Christ, who have saved me. 
I love to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So therefore, then, it says here, the Bible says, therefore, go and make disciples of, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, name of, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's very important that we cannot do that if we are not bold enough. We have to be bold enough in sharing the gospel. Listen what Ellen G. White, the book of inspiration, say. You know, not, not really. What am I saying here? Effective witnessing involves overcoming fear. Hallelujah. Amen. Effective witnessing involves overcoming fear and sharing your faith with others. So we cannot, you know, we are not bold enough because there is fear in us. What are, going, what are they going to say? They will never accept. This area is so difficult. You know, we already, <laughs> we already, we, are, we have already an answer and we are asking God to do a miracle. When we have a wrong answer, we have already talked, we have already become God saying, this area, you know, is so difficult. It cannot happen. We have already fear in us. When uh, Brother Aurel is telling us, let's go and visit, then some people just sneak and run away. You know, They say, I have something, I already planned something. Because of fear, we are not bold enough. But when I know, I know Jesus has promised, I will be with you until the end of what? Until the end of the age. I know he will never leave me. And he says, he promises, he says, how beautiful it is, the, 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 how, how beautiful it is, the feet that takes what? The gospel. Just the, good, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, when we do so, we, have, we know that. N n let me say something. Whether I said, effective witnessing involves overcoming fear and sharing your faith with others, whether through conversations, invitation to church, or participation in outreach activities. You know, you can be bold enough and invite somebody, please come. But you think, he has his own church. He will not come, and then you dare to invite that person. Because already, there's power of, of words. There's power in thinking, your thoughts. So if you are thinking that he's not going to come, why are you inviting? But if you believe that he's going to, he's going to come, you know, even our prayers, we must believe. We must know that it's going to happen. But if you say, maybe it may not happen, you know, this country is so hard. I hear people saying, these people, people cannot accept. You read, it. it's not your word, it's Jesus' word. People can bring, these Indians, they will never accept. They are so difficult. You already said. Now, you have already closed your mind. You have already said it, so what are you? It's like, you know, that the, you know, students say, math, you teach mathematics. Math is difficult. Already, you have already concluded. And so what are you asking? If we take it and say it is not ours, it is God's, we are just witnesses. We are just witnessing for Jesus Christ. I am a witness. I, I am going to witness for so and so. You are going to witness for Jesus Christ, not for yourself. And you witness for what you have seen and what you have heard. Tell people, they will hear the word. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, be positive in your sharing of the word of God. And don't make it so complicated. Share with what be yourself in sharing. Use your own way, your own method, not people's method. Just use, be yourself. You know, we are, you know, when I preach here, I don't want to be like Mark Finley. I can never be like Mark Finley. I cannot be like so. You know, I just be yourself. Be yourself. You are, you know, you were wired differently. God just made you the way He made you, and He wants you to be authentic. Be just share what, the, do the things the way you, are, you do things. So long as you are in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to use you in the way he wants to use you. In a very powerful way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So what God has aligned you the way God has aligned you. just be, be yourself. And be, be realistic. Just share. Just go freely. Don't just create things. Don't be like somebody. Be yourself. And when you do so, you are going to see what God is going to do for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, unity in mission and purpose. I said number one is what? Transformed life. Uh, 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 living a transformed life. Living the message. You can't say this. You can't, you can't drink water and you preach wine. <laughs> no. Live the message. Amen. We have to live the message. In other words, we live a transformed life. Even what you share with me. You know, people tell me, Pastor, pray for me. But when I hear them, what they are saying, I know this prayer is not going to be answered. 
because because of in the first place you don't you are not in tune with the, the source of power now in the first place you don't have the faith because you are already talking of other things because whether whether challenges you have to believe that those challenges they are not greater than god so then you are putting your challenges so above god and you are telling us to pray nothing will happen nothing for sure because your your problems they are greater than your god so how but if you know that these, these challenges, are, they are not nothing before God, and we are going to overcome it by the power of God, then we can pray things will start happening. Hallelujah. Yeah. So number one, I said, living a transformed life. That's really, that's an effective witnessing believer. And then number two, we have said what? Live a bold, boldness in sharing the word of God, sharing with people. Fear not there. You go by faith, not with fear. You know, when, when faith is in you, when fear tries to come, faith pushes the fear out. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, number four, number three, I said unity in mission and purpose. First Corinthians, verse 10, listen what it says. I appeal to you, this Paul is saying, I appeal to you, brothers. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters. In the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you, all of you, Agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and in thought. In mind and in thought. Hallelujah. Amen. When our mind is united, when our thoughts are united, and then it's so powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. So listen, listen what the Lord is here. You know, let me tell you, this is when you are we united in mission and, and in purpose, we will continue doing what God has really given us to do. Do you know that? It's very important. For us as brothers and sisters, as we serve, as we, we yes, we are transformed. We are living a transformed life. Yes, we are bold, bold, we are bold in sharing the gospel. But until, unless we are united, we will not go anywhere. Do you know that? Because, yes, our lives have been transformed. Yes, we are bold, but we are not united. Nothing will happen. So that's what Paul says here. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, because these are the people who had already known Jesus Christ, who are already living a transformed life, who are already very bold, but they are not united in, in mission and in purpose. So they are scattering. How can they be effective? You cannot be powerful. You cannot be powerful. I want to say this, that uh, this is what... Miss White says, Ellen G. White, there is power in unity. Hallelujah. Amen. There is always power in unity. Amen. When the church is united, the influence of the Holy Spirit is veiled. Hallelujah. Amen. When the church is united, when all of us, no matter how great, how small we are, no matter, even when the family, the mother, the, the children, they are united in your house, you can feel the impact in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. We can, the influence of the Holy Spirit failed. Now we can, you know, let me tell you, when you are united, if, and I'm saying we are united, I'm not saying we are not, but when we are united, even when somebody is stepping in here, he can feel the influence. He can feel the power. Even when you are singing, the, somebody will feel the presence of the Lord because of the Holy Spirit. You cannot avoid it. But if there's, you know, you know, you understand what I mean. Yeah? So, uh, you know, see, now listen, let me finish this. Listen carefully. When differences and the, 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 the dissensions come in, the spirit is grieved. Hallelujah. The spirit is grieved. If there's a lot of differences, uh, chop, 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 talking, talk, you know, there's no unity there. And our witnessing becomes useless. It becomes powerless. But when there's unit, even the enemy when he's trying to come in, is conquered at the door. He cannot penetrate. He cannot penetrate children of God. So we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit by our differences. But we want to be united as children of God who have already been transformed, who their lives have been transformed, who are living a, a bold life in sharing the gospel, then unity is there. Powerful. Very powerful children of God. 
It can be. You know, they say here, she says here, when, we, when, uh, when differences come in, the spirit is grieved and its power is withdrawn. The power of the Holy Spirit is withdrawn. That's why we read in the Acts, when you, you shall receive power, when what comes? When the Holy Spirit comes. But if it comes and people are scattered, they are not united. Even when the promise of the Holy Spirit was declared, they said, you go, stay in Jerusalem, in that upper room, until you receive what? You receive the Holy Spirit. That's how we were, they were told. Listen what the book of John says, John 13, uh, 35. 13, 35. By this all people will know that you are what? You are my disciples. If you do what? If you have love for one another. When people love one another, they get united. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's no love, there's no unity. You know you can fake that you love me and you don't love me. You know, people say, you know, your face is all what tells. What tells is inside here. Somebody will tell you good words, but inside here is different. Did you know that? So, hmm, I was telling somebody, uh, you know, I was sharing with my fellow, one, my fellow friend is a, is a minister of the gospel. Wherever I am, I will see when he sees me or wherever I appear somewhere, and then I can see a lot of tension, you know, a lot of tension. I say, what's, what's the problem? I said, what's the problem? Even the, the way his leaders behave. And then I was sharing. I said, man of God, we, don't, we, don't, we, we are children of God. We don't need to do this. What's the problem? I told him that when I come to your house, if you want to come to my house and know that really you are loved in my house, we, without me saying anything, you will see how the children behave to you. You will see even my wife the way my wife is going to handle you. You know, you will know that, especially with the children, if, because they listen, they hear what you talk about somebody, if you are talking. If you say, ah, Elder Paul is a good man. So when they see Elder Paul, they will rush because the mother has been saying like that. They, because they see the unit, the unit is there. The love is there. So people can see, they can know. So it's powerful, friends. That's why the Bible is saying, by all, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. How are people going to see that we are Jesus Christ's disciples? Because we are sent to make disciples. When they come, when they see the love we have one another, the way we talk to one another, the love is being, that's so powerful witnessing. Hallelujah. They will know that we know the Lord. We love Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And two words says here, unity and love, uh, uh, the, the unity and love existing among the brethren is the most powerful argument in favor of Christianity. Do you get what it says here? It is so powerful. The, the unity and love existing among the brethren when it is existing among the brethren, which like Upendo, Upendo we love that. The word Upendo means love. Yeah. We are loving church. Come and visit with us. You can feel the presence of God. Those who are listening to me online. Here we love one another. And that's why I'm preaching that we will continue to become strong witnessing if we continue having this love. That's why the pen of inspiration says, the unit and the loving existing among the brethren is the powerful argument in favor of Christianity when there is love and the unity existing among, among God's children. Hallelujah. Amen. It's powerful witnessing. Now as I finish, number four. I've already said three. Eh? I just go with, I just choose number four, only four. Dependency on the Holy Spirit. Dependency on what? On the Holy Spirit. Number one, living a transformed life. Number two, being bold. Number three, being what? A unit, unity in mission and in purpose. Oh, now at last, allow the Holy Spirit to continue using you. Hallelujah. Just don't depend on your own. There are people who are using the Spirit, but no, we don't use the Spirit to witness. No, 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 no. We are not using the Spirit to go and uh, spread the gospel. No, we allow the Spirit of God to do what? Use us. We have to depend on the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says, that is the final verse that we read the scripture reading. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Are you powerless? Am I powerless in my witnessing? Because of what? Because 
The spirit is not in me. You remember, you remember in the Bible where Paul went and when he was talking to people, he says, he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit? They said, we have never even heard that. He said, <laughs> but we know that we were baptized in the baptism of who? Of, of John the Baptist, eh? We were baptized, but what about the Holy Spirit? No, they said, we have not even heard about it. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, they were living a powerless life. But the moment we, we just yield the Holy Spirit, the moment, you know, when you are baptized, you should be baptized in water and then, then be baptized by the, oh, the Holy Spirit. Then you receive now, you start living in power. The only the Bible says, you will receive power. I can only receive power when the Spirit of God comes upon me. You know, when you are reading the scripture, personalize it. Hallelujah. Put it, put your name there. Me. I receive, I can only be powerful when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Are you powerful? Have you received power in your witnessing? Yes, you say you are living a, a, a transformed life. Yes, you are saying you are bold in your witnessing. Yes, you are saying that you are united in mission and in purpose. But what about the Spirit? Are you depending on the Holy Spirit? Oh, it becomes useless. That means everything is here. They have to, work, they, they have to go hand in hand. You must have a transformed life. Yes, you must be bold. Yes, you must be united in mission and in purpose. Yes, allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, then we will see many things happening. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say, now when it has come, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. We are going to be witnesses starting from your own house. Your own house. You ask yourself, you know, one time I went to the Philippines and I was preaching and I was sharing the word of God and I saw so many people being converted. I said, oh my, my father has not yet accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. My father has not been converted. Then I started going to the prayer garden and praying and praying. I said, Lord, how can I be effective outside here but my Jerusalem? I was so much bothered. I said I cannot go back home. I was a missionary in the Philippines. I cannot go back home. But what I can do, I can do what we call prayer evangelism to my own family. Lord, forgive me. I was, then I prayed, I prayed in the prayer garden. I saw my father, my, I received a letter saying, your father, I started going to church. Amen. Then I went back again, I cried. I cried to the Lord for my Jerusalem. And then I received another letter with a picture inside my father being baptized in a very small liver uh, besides my home. I said, hallelujah. I depended on the Holy Spirit. And I listened to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It has to start from Jerusalem. Although I was not home, but the power of God was upon me. The power of God that allowed me to do what? To witness through prayer to my father. And my father was baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus. I want to let you know, children of God, you are Jerusalem. You have to endeavor and see that your Jerusalem is reached. You know, you, I cannot be very effective if my Jerusalem is just struggling. You know, I will always tell people what I have to endeavor. You see, like this morning, and it's not good to talk about your children. I told my children, you need to do what? You need to align with the Spirit. You know, because you see, people train dogs here. You know, have you ever seen this American? They know how to train their dogs and what they say the dog can do. But how comes we don't train our children like the same way? If you can train a dog and the dog can follow you and do everything, but I'm not able to train my children to do what? To be like what? The way I want them to be. Then I say, okay, I can just leave them like that. Okay, but do you leave your dog to be like that? How did you endeavor? You work so hard so that the dog, Sister Corinne, you, you call the dog, come, you do, don't do that. The dog will stop immediately. Will start, you do, do, do like this, you know, and listening to you. You call the dog, just coming. But if you ask, hey, Rashid, come. Then she'll say, yeah. no, I can't, no, I can't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but Rashid can even call the dog, can call the dog that you have trained. He could also follow him. Come, dog, come here. And the dog will listen. Eat that food. But you say, no, mommy, I'm not eating today. No, I cannot eat. <laughs> I <don't> eat. No. <laughs> but 
you can you imagine what I'm sharing here? And uh, you know what I mean? We have to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. And then, then start the gospel from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And if we are ready, we have received the power that the Spirit gives when it comes in us, then we will be very effective in whatever we are doing. Hallelujah. Because we are not going to depend on ourselves, but we are going to depend on what? We are going to depend on the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. But many times we grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to do something in your life, but you say no. Because we don't listen. We don't listen to the promptness of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of noises around us. And until we shut them down, we'll never hear the voice of God. We have to shut the sounds, the noises which comes. And you think those are right noises. That those are not, the sounds you hear is not from God. Listen, you have to, to be still and listen to the voice of God. And it's only when the Holy Spirit has come, you become powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to finish by saying this. The Bible says, in John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of every, everything I have said to you. God has called us to be witnesses. He has called us. I want you to remember this as I conclude. You are not alone in witnessing. The Holy Spirit empowers you. You with, in, with courage. Listen, you are not alone in what do you want? In witnessing. When you go around and for sure if you are a born again creation, if you have a new life in Jesus Christ, as you go around witnessing for Jesus Christ, you are not alone. As you walk around being a trans, with a transformed life in you because you are in Jesus Christ, I want, and you walk boldly to, to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. You walk with unity in, in purpose, in unity in mission and in purpose. I, and depending on the Holy Spirit, I want to assure you, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit will empower you, empowers you with courage, will give you courage. Number one, you will have courage. I have to go. I am so courageous in the Lord Jesus. I will go no matter what. I will share the gospel no matter what. You will go with courage. The courage which comes from the Lord. The courage which comes from the, which, which comes from the Holy Spirit. And then with the wisdom. God will give you the word to say. Words of wisdom. You will not be careless. You know you can go and witness and become careless and you lose somebody. Instead of being patient because you want to jump on things, you say something which is unwise things. And then to push somebody far away. So God will give you courage. The Holy Spirit will give you courage. And will give you wisdom. And will give you what? Guidance for God's sake, for the gospel's sake. Children of God, if we do so, we have to pray also for, for discernment and trust God to work through you. Pray for discernment. You will know that this, this fruit is ripe. You know that people go even, they want to brag the, the fruit which are not unripe fruits, you know. If you go, you are shaking the tree. You go shaking the tree and you find out that the, the fruits are not, you know, they are not falling. Now, now, why do you continue for shaking the tree? You know, you shake the tree until you damage the tree. Wait until they are ripe. But how will you know that the, tree, the, the fruits are li ripe? Until you go and shake the tree, you know? You go, if you go to the, you know, the mango tree, you want to test whether the, the, the fruits which are there are ripe, they are ready for eating, you go shake it, you know? Because you can see they are ripe, but maybe <laughs> the outward is, is just lying to you. <laughs> but you go and try to shake it. Those who are ripe, they will fall down. Hallelujah. They will fall down. But if they are not, then leave them. Wait until they are there. In other words, when we are witnessing, God gives us wisdom, gives us discernment to know that this is ripe already. Or it's not ripe. You jump, you go, but you have to go. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't know that they are not ripe until you go. May God bless you and empower you as we become effective witnessing believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we do what? When we live a transformed life. When we do what? We, we bold in, the, in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. When we are united in mission and in what? In purpose. And when we are what? When we are relying, when we are depending on the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.